How can we embrace the unknown when we have no evidence that things will be okay once we take that leap? Before we decide to take the path to journey into the unknown, we are destined to experience doubt. And for some of us, that doubt can be crippling. How are we supposed to take a leap of faith when logic is telling us differently? When Moana is wrestling with this idea of should she go past the reef or not, her mother pushes doubt on her. Her mother tells her the story of how her father and his friend went past the reef once and that they failed, causing her father's friend to lose his life. Sometimes we wish we were what we wish we could do it's just not meant to be on top of that moana also begins to doubt herself instead of putting her rock on the mountain and taking her place as chief moana hops on a boat and sails only to find herself face to face with a wave that destroys her boat and puts her at risk of drowning when you journey into the unknown you cannot avoid doubt doubt is your ego's way of making you hesitate to make sure you take everything into account before you make a move it's healthy to have doubt but where you can get caught up is when you let that doubt prevent you from taking action. Logic rules doubt. We doubt things because we don't have enough logical evidence to believe. But where we lack belief, we can have faith. Absurdist philosopher Soren Kierkegaard once said, when the believer has faith, the absurd is not the absurd. Faith transforms it. Meaning that when we have faith, we're able to transform all of our doubts into beliefs. There are a few other parallels I found between absurdist philosophy and Moana's journey, but I'll put those in a separate video. If you want, just comment below if you'd like to hear more about that. But back to the story. When Moana begins to have doubt and tell her grandmother my father was right, her grandmother doesn't argue. It's time to put my stone on the mountain. Okay, well then head on back. What her grandmother knows is that Moana will always be drawn back to her calling. She doesn't react, she just vibes with her stingrays, and then proceeds to show Moana the history of her ancestors. Ancestors that lived an amazing life and voyaged across the sea regularly. And then, once again, the ocean places the heart of Tefiti directly into Moana's hands. This is the catalyst that pushes Moana to stand up to her father and tell him that she knows for sure how to save the island. And even as Moana is standing there in front of him with the heart of Tefiti in her hand, he still denies it. We have to find Maui! We have to restore the heart! There is no heart! This... this is just a rock! No! You see, sometimes when you have a path that you're meant to follow, you have to choose it over everything. You were given the vision. You were positioned to go on that journey because it wasn't meant for anyone else. Others may have tried and failed and discouraged you from doing it, but that's because the journey wasn't for them. It was for you. So the question for you is, are you going to answer the call or are you going to keep living someone else's version of who you are meant to be? Moana's argument with her father is cut short when they realize her grandmother has fallen ill. This forces both Moana and her family to come to terms with the idea of mortality. On her deathbed, Moana's grandmother tells her to go and follow her calling and Moana doesn't think twice. She runs down the path to pack a bag full of supplies and guess who's there to help her. When you're faced with someone else's mortality, you're also faced with your own. And when the fact that life is short is basically there smacking you in the face, you are more likely to take those risks. And when you do, you'll probably be surprised as to who's still around supporting you, even if they don't quite understand. Moana sets sail, the island goes dark symbolizing that her grandmother has crossed over. And shortly after, the manta ray spirit emerges from the island and guides Moana over those same strong waves that she struggled with crossing earlier that day. Now spiritually, stingrays symbolize guidance because of how easy they're able to navigate rough waters, leaving us to wonder, as Moana sets sail into the unknown, is she actually on her own and are we? Spiritually, the stingray is known to symbolize guidance, adaptation, and opportunity. 
And if you have one as your spirit animal, it's there to remind you to trust your inner compass and to follow your instincts. Before she left the island, all she heard was that nobody knows what's beyond the reef. And the ancestors deemed it as dangerous because as the darkness spread, boats would leave and never return, leading Moana to believe that leaving her island is an act of blind faith. But as we know, blind faith is never really blind. There are always breadcrumbs, signs, and synchronicities beforehand. Otherwise, you wouldn't have been drawn to the idea in the first place. In Moana's case, she found physical evidence that her ancestors used to travel beyond the reef. Her island is now being affected by the darkness that everyone said was a myth. And the ocean that acts as a form of divine guidance pushes her forward in so many different ways. After Moana is led across the reef by her stingray guide, she's having more trouble sailing than she expected and then a storm hits. This storm gets so bad that it washes her and her boat on shore, the shore that just so happens to be Maui's island. The ocean being this force of aggressive guidance is not surprising at all. No one said divine guidance was comfortable. Trust me, the universe will manhandle you. Because when the universe needs you to be somewhere, the guidance doesn't look how you would expect it to look. Sometimes it looks and feels just downright destructive. Um, what? I said help me! But even after Moana finds Maui, the ocean doesn't stop placing her where she needs to be. The ocean kept putting her back on that boat like I said what I said. It was Moana. Right. And just like the ocean, the universe will do whatever it takes to put you where you need to be. So if you're expecting a graceful journey, you better think again. Even with all this aggressive universal guidance, it doesn't leave you impervious to doubt. Doubt is sneaky. The point of Maui as a character is to introduce doubt to Moana, even though the power of the universe is literally right behind her and makes it known that she's nothing to play with. But Maui introduces a different kind of doubt. Maui introduces the doubt that Moana has inside of her. He plays on the doubts that she holds about her inner power. He says things like, okay, why would the ocean choose a girl that doesn't even know how to sail? You're a princess. You are not a wayfinder. You will never be a wayfinder. You will never be a wayfinder. And the truth is, you can have all the universal guidance in the world and still doubt yourself. So how do you find it in you to keep moving forward? Stay tuned for part three. Oh. I know I was a, I was, I was living someone else's version. I was doing it, but then I chose myself. Yeah, I, sometimes I still be like, you know what? Let me go back to someone else's version because that seems like it's safer. <laughs> Her grandmother tells Moana, oh, I'm getting emotional. This movie gets me so much. And guess who's there to help her? Her mother, as I cry because of how gracefully they're able to navigate tumultuous, tumultuous, because of how gracefully they're able to navigate tumultuous, tum rough, we're gonna say rough. <laughs>